Hello everyone, you are welcome to the 8th episode of the Manual Reinforced Concrete Design using the RCC Design Excel Spreadsheet. I am Ridwan Ibrahim. And then in this episode, I will be demonstrating to you how you can analyze and design a continuous beam. All right. So in one of the episodes, we have used the RCC 11, which is the element design. We use it for uh, designing a beam. So we use that basically for designing, I think, a single span beam. Okay. So if I click on uh, the element design, which is RC11. Okay. So if you come to your rectangular beam over here, you will see that everything we actually did using this particular template was just one span beam. Okay. So you see that it just asks for the moment. Then we place the span and then the depth and the section. Then we try to determine the type of um, column it was. All right. So this is for RCC 11. So it is basically for a one span beam. All right. Just one span beam. But what if it has several spans, like two spans, three spans, four spans. So in that case, RCC 11 would not be useful to make such decision. So we have to use RCC 9 to 5. Okay. So in this case, you can just decide the number of spans you wish to have. Okay. So in this particular one, you see we have five number of spans. All right. So, um, and then if you look at this, you see we have five spans. See, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So let me try to increase this. The moment I increase this to six, this will also change to six. Okay. So let's say we have six numbers for the number of spans. Okay. Then look at this. It has changed to six numbers. All right. Now, if you ask me, what is the maximum span? Okay. What's the maximum span? The span that is the largest. So let's see. We, um, the maximum span is. 4.7 okay that's 4.7 meter and then what is the depth okay so in this case what i want to design for is actually a rectangular beam i believe i've explained the difference between rectangular beam l beam and t beam okay i told you that a rectangular beam is a beam that is supporting no slab whereas an l beam is a beam that is supporting slab at one side whereas t beam is a beam that is supporting slab at both ends both sides okay so this side i will pick a rectangular beam an example of a rectangular beam is um, a roof beam okay so i'll pick rectangular beam now the depth let's use a depth of 450 all right and then width a width of um two sorry uh, yeah it's width of 230 okay then hf clear that all right then bf clear that as well okay so and then the cover okay so let's use a cover of um 25 okay that's the top cover what about the bottom cover 25 then the side cover 25 okay yeah then the support steel let's just use y okay so support steel in alternate layer. Do you want it Y for yes and for no? So pull Y, Y for yes, okay? Then grade of steel, let's use uh, grade 30, okay? Then, uh, sorry, grade of concrete, 30. Then grade of steel, let's use 460. Then grade of steel for the shear, which is basically the link, let's use 250, which stands for might steel. You know, 250 is like the average strength of might steel, you know, might steel. And then the maximum aggregate size, let's use 20. And then 1.5, 1.05 for the partial factor safety of concrete and then steel, respectively. Then what is the density of concrete? Let's just use 24 for the normal weight concrete. You know, there is the heavy weight and then, yeah. So let's use 24. Now, by default, it automatically calculate the safe weight. That will be cost 25. The safe weight is basically this 24, 24 kN per meter cube. Multiply it by 0 0.45, multiply it by 0 0.23, then you arrive at 2.5, all right? Then any additional dead load that you want to have, okay? So let's um, add, let's say, 5, okay? Any other dead load. So by doing that, it will add up this. Then any impulse load, although for beam, you are not expecting to have any additional impulse load, okay? Because it's a beam, okay? But let me just um, put 3, okay? So we have it like this, all right? So by inserting all these parameters, it will automatically go ahead and do the analysis and also 
um, the design. Okay, so let's see the analysis for the beam uh, for the bending. Okay, so look at the bending moment. The bending moment at the end support, the two end will be zero. Okay, because that is a um, pin at the last support. So zero zero. Then for the end span, that is the you know the first span and the last span. So you have thirty point four. Okay, for the first interior support, which is basically this one and then this one. Okay, so um you have thirty seven point one. Then for the interior spans span. Okay, so we have twenty three point six. And for the internal support, so you have twenty seven point zero. Then the effective depth calculate then the BF it should be two thirty the BF should be equivalent to to the width of the beam okay then the AS um required in the tension zone okay so since the moment is zero definitely the AS required should be zero because it is the moment that will result in more um in area of steel so if the moment is zero area of steel should be zero so that's why you're having zero here. Then the corresponding area of steel for this 30.4 is 180. For this is this, for this is this. And then the area of steel required in the compression zone, everything is zero, zero, zero. They are simply telling you that you do not have any reinforcement in the compression zone. This is telling you that this is a singly reinforced, um, singly reinforced beam. Um, so, but at the end of the day, you have no choice than to still put reinforcements in the tension zone, okay? So, however, what you just put there is a nominal reinforcement, maybe 2Y16, okay? So, you put reinforcement, but it will be a nominal reinforcement that is not actually designed for, okay? It's just placed there for placing sake, okay? So, you go out for deflection. This is the permissible deflection, 55.89. And it is the actual deflection, 11.6. Well... This deflection is doing great. So what I will just do, I will try to reduce these steps. Let's put a depth of 350 here. Let's see if um, we still have a good result. Okay. So this section is carrying the list. It's doing very well. You see, even the, the deflection is still doing well. Even after reducing the, what's it called? Let me use a, a depth of 300. So, you know, in roof beam, you usually have a depth of 300. Okay. 300 by 230. Okay, so 18.43. So at least let's see it like that. So the tension reinforcement, I will put 16 mm. Let me use 16 mm throughout. Okay. 16 mm. Okay. Then 16 mm. Okay. And then 16 mm. It's that's the reinforcement that I wish to use. Then automatically it will calculate the you know the the um the expected numbers for me. So if you have 16 mm, if the 16 mm is being corresponded to this area of steel, okay, which is zero, you'll be having you no know, just 402. I will just be having two numbers, okay. Also, if this area of steel, which is 269, if you check your steel table, 269, 16 mm, how many numbers? You'll be having um, an equivalence of two numbers. So two two at the top, two at the bottom, two at the top, two at the bottom, two at the top, okay. Don't forget that the top, bottom, top, bottom, it is switching like that, okay? So, all those, even though it is top, it is still a tension zone. This bottom is still tension zone. So, you should perfectly know where the tension zone is in a beam and where the um, the compression zone should be in a beam when it is a continuous beam, all right? Then, for the compression reinforcement, don't forget that, as I said earlier, that this beam requires no compression reinforcement, but we have no choice but to place nominal. So, you have no choice. It will still place it. So, let's use 16 mm for it as well. It has placed 12 mm here, you know, 12 mm because it is nominal. So, it was like, let me put 12 mm. But the thing is, um, it will be kind of. Um, it will be kind of abnormal to be seeing 12 mm in your beam. Personally, I don't ha like having 12 mm in my beam, so I'll just put everything to be 16 mm. So by default, it will be 2. Okay, 2, 2, 2, 2. So even if you put 12 mm, it will still pass because you only need a nominal reinforcement. Okay, so that's that. And then, you know, we've checked our result for the bending moment. Okay. So it's the bending moment that I use to determine your actual main rebar. Then what about for the shear force? Okay, so the shear force at this position is just, you know, blah, 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 nominal. So then you see your link. I will prefer to use 8 mm rebar. Okay, so your link. Okay, yes, 8 mm. And then 8 mm. Okay, so here I place the wrong thing there. Okay. Yeah, so the number of legs puts two legs and then spacing automatically to fix the spacing to be 175. Okay, so in that way, you can just come here and check your output summary. Okay, so you see, okay, 
for every position and support provide 2y16 here provide 2y16 like that like that then for the checks it will check the cover it will check the shell link and then the overall design everything is what is a valid design okay so you can also check it here the status here so it's a valid design if it is not a valid design you see it over here that it is a field design okay so what if it is a um t beam on hell or hell beam you just go ahead and do the same thing it is still uh the same process all right so um it is very very um very very great all right so if you like the video make sure you give it a like and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet consider giving me a subscription thank you for watching